Welcome to African Clearing. We finally found a game that is not Arabia and African Clearing. As you can see, it's a nomad start map. You start with some villagers and oh, look at that Mihai spotting out Draken right it? away. And Mihai and Draken have built their town centers very close to each other. It's not going to be a town center war. Uh, that's not possible these days. But if you... They actually probably both know it because of the yellow boxes. I believe we get yellow boxes on this map as well. Meaning that these players realize and understand they are right on top of each other. Now, African Clearing is a map that uh, Nomad Start has all of these little shorefish, has rhinoceros, it has zebra, it has these... Uh, Boabab trees that have 200 wood, but then all around the outside edge is these trees, these normal trees uh, that are everywhere. The civilizations for Draken, we have the Saracens, pretty versatile civ with their market bonus. They can play on about any map pretty effectively and do a lot of different things. And for Mihai, who's just now getting his town center up, we have the Japanese normally a great hybrid map civilization but that's because of their fishing ships not their fisher men and ladies so we have both players up we have both players doing the things that you do and on this map it is a great idea if you're playing this map you want your town center on one of these pawns then you can go out to wood a little bit later you can see and both players have done that built on a pawn both players are looking at the wood line that's just a sheep up there but looking at the wood line What's that? That's on. these pawns are a great source of very quick food income this game surely gonna have some feudal aggression so we'll be interesting to see if we see a bunch of towers we do have a stone mine right here for mihai a stone mine right here for draken i can just zoom out and i can watch both players at the same time we do have lumber camp being added up here four Ooh. interesting mihai might be losing a villager here oh that's annoying mihai tried to bring the villa the the rhino in oh he's gonna use the sheep to block give himself a little extra time there should be okay yeah as long as he plays it right garrison oh he didn't need to okay rhinoceros is in the villager survives a couple on wood versus three on wood over here 11 to 10 on the villagers. That's just the difference of the town center being up just a tiny bit faster for Mihai. Second pond already added in versus the rhinoceros now adding in a second pond. I like to stick on the pawns as much as possible. Very cheap and very efficient source of food income. Rhinoceros coming in for a dragon now. Now, there's always the smallest chance that um, Draken has no idea, but I'm pretty sure from the way the game starts, I'm pretty sure he does have an idea. The second rhinoceros has been brought in there for Mihai. Not a whole lot goes on in Dark Age in this game. It's a whole lot of fishing, a whole lot of a rhinoceros taking and a whole lot of just getting ready to go up to the next age.
Interesting to see that nobody's bothering with the zebra. Either side. There's zebra there and zebra there. Just don't want to bother with that inefficiency. These zebra should probably be taken. I would say that's not that inefficient. Like these are pretty efficiently as places as well. Not, you know, perfect, but pretty good. We have Feudal Age on the way for both players. We have Loom has come in for Mihai Dirac and skipping that is going on to gold. Barracks coming down for Mihai Dirac and I don't know that he's particularly playing this like he understands there's an opponent right on his face. Militia coming out. I think you would want to wall here at the very least to kind of protect that wood line. Alright, barracks coming down. Okay, all right, he understands. Very nice, very nice. Understanding the situation. It's like it's gonna be straight into archers for our Saracen player, a Japanese player going into the Japanese men-at-arms. Very powerful unit. High attack. Well, high speed attacks, rather. Militia heading out looking for a place to pressure, and those walls have gotten up. And I would go ahead and pop something right there. Because why not? See, if you don't. Both players up, both players adding the archer range. You could just waltz right on around there. You know what I'm saying? Like, why not just walk around that corner? Walk around. Not really playing that, though. Yeah, and there's the tower being added. That's expected. That is very expected. And that's outside the sight of Draken. So that tower gonna go up. Gonna be a problem. Gonna deny that gold. He does have another gold right here. He does know about that gold as well. So, he'll be fine. He'll just have to relocate his gold. Now the towers come down, and he realizes, oh, this is awkward. Now, another awkward part about this is as he relocates to other gold mines and other places of getting resources for Draken, it means that he doesn't have villagers under this TC, really. The archer's coming out. It's a little bit slow. Draken definitely on the back foot here. I think he might even have to relocate his wood line over here. It's getting awkward for him. Dropping the blacksmith. Ensuring he's got the defense behind continually. But at some point, this gets sketchy, you know? And yeah, he's got to keep villagers under this TC or else it becomes useless. Fletching on the way in. You could just put a tower up over here to stop this push. Draken not putting a tower up, though. Because he sold all of his stone for gold. No tower incoming for Draken. I think a tower is almost, almost needed on this side. But nope, he pushes it away. For now. The army comes right back. Repositions so that the archers and skirmishers can take on the archers from Draken. <laughs> Mihai's pressure has been uh, held off for now. I love this. Outposts added all the way around. This army's gonna just loop around this way, look for more damage. And now they can actually walk right through the middle as there's absolutely no reason uh, to not go directly through the middle. And that army is a lot more powerful than that army. Castle Age on the way in for Draken. So he's trying to pull off some fast castle stuff, trying to make things happen in the Castle Age. Now he's got to survive. The army's back here. Can he get his villagers away? Looks like one dead villager. 
gotta continually back away. He can't afford to lose any army. And this this gold mine, he's gotta abandon it, or else he's gonna lose many villagers here. One. Gonna be two. Gonna be three. Just bleeding villagers now. Four villagers down overall. Five down overall. And his army is just getting wrecked as well. Mihai. I think Mihai just took the game. I think Mihai is just in an absolutely dominant position right now. This army. Dragon. Now it's been cleaned up. Really, but the Eco KD. Oh, there it is. It is four. Four to zero in the Eco KD. Not what you want to see. And here comes more army. Mihai going all in in the Feudal Age here. Draken only 30 seconds from Castle Age, but what can he do in Castle Age? What's he going to do? I don't know. Zero villagers on food. That's all right. He's got gold. He's Saracens with gold. This army circling back around. Castle Age is in, but what is going to be the upgrade? Okay. Elite Skirm and Siege. I like it. I like it. I like it. He's got to keep these skirms alive for another 30 seconds. Or else this upgrade's going to be a waste. And it looks like... Looks like... Mihai kind of understands what he's up against here. Because he went in hard on those skirmishers. Manganel coming in. And it's all gold. No more eco. This is a clown legion player. Of course it is. No more food. No more vills. Just going full on to the gold. Double siege workshop for their Saracen player. He's going for the kill. Mihai on the other side. He's going to get ready to go up to the castle age here. He's just, you know, balancing his eco with his market. And he'll be going up in a few more seconds. But by that time, he's going to have two mangonels on his face. Second one coming out. Second siege workshop. Now the question is, can Mihai hold? Mihai did the damage. He's ahead by so many villagers. So he just has to survive until he can get a couple mangonels out or a couple knights out. So I would love to see the knights. The skirmishers were upgraded. There's no monks out. I think knight siege both would just be really dominant. And this mangonel probably gonna die because of yeah great play by our Mihai well looks like it's saved yeah all right hanging out not gonna die after all the tower is gonna go down and yep boom stable a minute in one minute and a minute and 30 seconds there will be knights on the field so, you're going to have to look at a monastery very soon here, Draken. You're going to... And boom! There it is. Well done. Well done. Looks like building another tower must be going for guard tower defense as well, but no university, obviously. It's in, he's still in feudal age. Interesting. This tower is going to be able to range the mangonels, but the mangonels won't be able to go after the tower because of the TC fire. Castle Age is in. We have Knight on the way. But we have a Monk on the way as well. Terrific timing on that. And the tower is just not going to do enough damage to really matter here. Nobody can even garrison in the TC. And the TC is down. Now the tower is going to go down. Then the, the Knight... The stable is going to go down, and the siege workshop is going to go down. But you can see 39 to 27 on the eco. Massive eco lead. So it's getting a little crazy. There's six mangonels, five mangonels firing away in your face. However, however, oh boy, oh boy. Needs to spread them out. Sees the stable and backs away. Interesting play. No more villagers being created still. I would love to see some more villagers being added at, at some point. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Big moment. Can this Manganel get a big, like, multi-Manganel hit in? And 
No. Nothing. However, how many? How many mangonels do two knights kill? That's the question. Ooh, great split off. I love that. Splits off and kills the enemy mangonel. Well done. But so many mangonels down by this knight. This knight took out four of them. One mangonel remaining. Monastery coming in on the other side for Mihai as well and a town center. So Mihai will be gaining an eco. And Mika Mihai puts so much damage onto that attack. Draken has to really get things sorted in his base economically wise or militarily wise. He doesn't have the push that he once had. Another Mangonel's coming out of this seed workshop. However, he's exposed. He has no military and oh, he's got two knights. Brings them out to kill that knight. There's a monk. There is a monk coming. And those knights have to run away. The villagers have to run away. The Manganel's almost out. One villager down. Manganel. Manganel's out. Manganel's going for the monk. Monk jukes. Monk dodges. Monk. He's still alive. The monk is still alive. And they're converting knights back and forth. And the monk dies. But the convert that was so fast. That was ridiculous. I don't know if that monk was the one converting over here or not. But that seemed very quick. Draken. Really pushing on Mihai. 30 villagers to 40 villagers. Oh, but there's a raid in the back. The archers and the skirmishers have made their way back around to the gold mine, and these villagers are dying. Draken needs to notice that. Needs to figure that out. And these knights, these knights from Mihai are really just being donated. Maybe the heavier push into siege would have been a more appropriate answer. Is this noticed? Yes, there is a skirmisher, uh, scorpion there to clean it up. Eco KD 10 to 3 now. The KD overall 28 to 30. Now the big fight on the front once again. Second Manganel coming out. We have a Manganel here. It can pop out and probably take out all three monks or the Manganel, whichever it pleases. And yeah, that's going to be the play. It's going to be for the, the monks. It's for sure going to be for the monks. Like I said. For sure for the monks. Conversion comes in. That Manganel's dead. Um, what are we looking at? We have, I think, a better fight for Mihai. It's going to take the fight. It's going to get kill both the Manganels. But now a monk coming in for Draken. Going for the convert. Going for the convert. Doesn't get it. And what do we have? Another Manganel being added. Sanctity coming in for Mihai. Draken still applying pressure. I think if he could get one uh, knight up there, but I don't know. Yeah, he hasn't noticed that. Probably does not expect that to be the case. Getting the convert, right? All right. Well, that makes up for his insta convert earlier. Unbelievably getting no conversion there. A second town center being added by Mihai. Very exposed position. No conversion there. Gets one there. Another monk coming out. Clicking, trying to figure out which one is not uh, super weak. And no conversion there. And that's not going to be a conversion. It's going to be a dead monk. And I think Draken is dead. GG. <laughs> GG called. And that's the game. <laughs> let's check the statistics. Uh, actually, let's go back. Let's go back. Return to map. Most units created. Manganels for Draken. Statistics. Mihai with the better economy. Militarily. Better KD for Mihai, but the buildings. Draken, of course. Conversions even. Uh, four and four there. Army high. 16 for Mihai. And total army just a little bit higher as well. Economy, barely better. 1,000 resources better. Technology stats, you can see the castle time. Very quick to get that pressure in. Did it work? Not quite. Villagers max, 31 to 47. That's the difference. APM. Uh, Mihai, pretty quick player. Wow, 81 APM versus the 48 for our Clown Legion player, Draken. I hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, drop a like. If you want to see some more, consider subscribing. If not, 
We'll catch you in the next one. See ya.